So if we could talk a little bit more about the anvil, because yeah. I want to know about how the location, you know, your location when you wrote those songs, how that impacted the final products. Okay. Totally. So that's where the anvil, those songs, you wrote those while you were up in the UP, correct? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's correct. All right. So we have listeners all over and um, I learned years ago that people outside of the Midwest have no idea what the UP is. Nope. Yeah. Um, in, the U, in, the, in the Midwest have no idea. And don't okay. tell anyone. Don't tell them. <laughs> okay. So I love the UP. I'm yeah. actually heading there in a couple of days. But for those Very who don't cool. know, the UP is the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. So the state of Michigan has like two peninsulas. And you can think of it like my son, who's now 11, but a couple of years ago, he called the main part of Michigan, you know, the mitten. Yep. He said that's big Michigan. And then the UP <laughs> is little Michigan. And I don't ever want to refer to it any other way. Okay. Big Michigan and little Michigan. So yeah. So the UP, it's a really special place full of solitude, natural beauty. Lake Superior is my favorite. Oh. So you're in the UP, you're writing these songs. How did the setting, you know, how did that affect your writing? Well, Okay, so, so I moved up there when my son was born in 2017. Okay. And I was still touring full-time with Flatfoot. And I was, like, full-blown through deconstructing things. You know, I at the time, I I just really... I guess I should back up, like, a, I should back up a little bit. Like, there was... The trajectory of these songs started when I was, like, 25, 26. I was really depressed and actually... I think I was... Not think. I, I was suicidal really over a lot of it and it came to a head one night when i got really drunk at a friend's birthday party and I, like threw up like a gallon of liquor and i preached a drunken sermon in the snow and bare feet and told my partner that i that i didn't want to be alive anymore because it was too hard yeah and from that point on like i was just i was i just i would that's when i started therapy and, okay um so this was kind of a, a long time in the making, but once we moved, when we moved up to the UP, I finally was out of a position where I was like, my entire life was centered around like church and oh. around like a you know particular worldview, whether it have like, no matter what kind of political affiliations it would have had, there's like that there was, I have a lot of really liberal Christian friends and I have a lot of like friends that are you know, or I guess I should say I have a lot of people in my life that are like so Christians and really conservative. So when I and like life was just so busy for me touring all the time and, you know, being constantly in that setting and like having so much noise that what really happened is I moved there and I had exactly three friends from you know, just from my partners from there. And I had like exactly three friends and, you know, I had to work to make ends meet and then I had a, a new kid. So there was, there was all that sure. to be, you know, to be uh, reckoned with. But uh, so it occurred like a big thing that kind of sparked it was I had so much time to like get to know myself and to reflect on a lot of things. And like, you know, one of my favorite things to do is go get lost in the woods and go trout fishing. Like I'll just go walk the street and whether there's someone with me or not, I, you know, just, that was a really, and it was a safe place. I didn't have all this input of like, you're just being influenced by such and such, or you're just, yeah. or for, you know, some people in my life, the devil's just doing this. And I'm just like, I, I don't believe that's a thing, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, so like, the locale really like what it came down to is it put me in a place where, where I started making conscious choices and conscious having like conscious revelations rather than being given. Like, I feel like I've always been a person who really loves philosophy and, you yeah. know, has read and studied a lot of different kinds of philosophy from, you know, and theological points as well. So, mm -hmm. so really like I got to a point to where I was just able to like all the noise got shut off yeah and i was forced to reckon with myself and thankfully forced to reckon with myself in a safe place where i could be allowed to make my own decisions and not feel like i'm letting someone down because i don't hold a certain view anymore um yeah and i remember i don't typically like say exactly what a song is about but i guess sure. uh, i guess i'll do it now that song days and nights that 
played right before the break that came back. That song is about the first time that I ever felt like I didn't hear God's voice anymore. And okay. a lot of, I've had people be like, you know, is this about a breakup? Is this about what, like, what? And, and I just kind of try to let people, I'm like, what do you think it's about? You know, like, what are you taking from it? And sure. But like, you know, I used to really believe that like God would like audibly speak to people. And, and then at that moment that I remember like what sparked that was the moment I was just like, I hear nothing, you know, which in, in a, a lot of ways is like a really, it's like, there's such a grief that comes along with that because yeah, for a while you feel very much alone. So, Especially since you were so involved in the yeah. church for, yeah. for a long time. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was in church Sunday three times for service, you know, Tuesday night band practice, Wednesday night service, Thursday night small group, you know, Friday night youth church, you know, I mean, and then Saturday, somebody was always doing something. It was all church kids, you know? So, I mean, my parents were in the choir and were like, you know, basically, I mean, I would just call them basically deacons of some kind, you know, and it was, you know, it was like for, for my whole life, it was so much. And Sure. And you found a way to get those feelings out through yeah. that song, right? Yeah. Writing those so writing that song while you're right. in the UP. Yeah. I mean, and it was basically like at that time it was like a it was like a hope of like maybe being able like someday like it, there's like two parts. Like a part of it was like, you know, hoping maybe that would come back at some point in time. And then okay. also like on the other hand, it was like kind of like a s like kind of like a look at this sad sack of shit you know thinking that like this is a thing you know and, and that's the way i wanted it to be because it's just there's just no there's no way of knowing totally you know what i mean yeah. so um well i thank you for sharing that your stories with us i know they're deeply personal and sometimes not very easy to talk about but we yeah. appreciate your being open sure man there's so many every i feel like there's so many people just hiding it and like yeah. i i can't i it's not in me to do that you know, like it's, this is how a lot of people, especially in my generation felt, you know, like, sure. like, or like not in my generation, but like in my like world have felt like, yeah. and yeah. I know there's a lot more and yeah. they, you know, they deserve to feel normal, but not so alone about it. And so ostracized for it. Yeah. 